the first uh, talk on introduction to autism spectrum disorder uh, by Dr. Dilini Vipulaguna, the consultant community pediatrician, um, and Dr. Darshini Hetiarachi, consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist. Uh, can we do a very quick introduction so over the uh, audience so we understand our uh, audience better when we uh, especially when we move towards the latter part of the day so what we are going to do first we are going to tell you what is autism so we'll tell a little bit about the diagnostic criteria uh, what do we use uh, you know and then we will move on to what we do when you come across a child with autism how do we work in teams and what are the evidence-based interventions actually how you practically do it in your clinic setting okay so that's why we have toys that's why we have people oh. so uh, as i said we'll go through this so i will start off and then i will hand over to dr darshani for the continuation then professor samanmali will go through the diagnostic criteria in uh, in uh, detail so autism is autism spectrum disorder or we call ASD in short is a neurodevelopmental disorder. So it's, it's not a neurological itself, it's a neurodevelopmental disorder and it has mainly two core characteristics when we talk about uh, social communication deficits or deficits in social uh, interactions and communication and the restricted and repetitive patterns of uh, behaviors. So we know when you talk as neurodevelopmental disorders, it comes to a group of uh, you know, disorders where our brain, as we all know, starts by forming synapses from the time of our conception. The brain learns and then you make synapses and you make pathways as you grow old. So experience helps to make these pathways stronger and if you don't use something that pathways will lose. So the neurodevelopmental disorders actually affect this trajectory when the brain is developing in the early developmental period that is why you can see the symptoms or features, we don't call symptoms, sorry, it's features of uh, the neurodevelopmental disorder. So it's a part of brain development, pathophysiology lies somewhere there, and it, different neurodevelopmental disorders can affect very specifically one area, for instance, communication like in autism or you know, learning in, as in learning disorders, or it can affect throughout the spectrum of uh, development. Now autism when we talk about this is something our parents come and ask when you have autism why my child got autism. So that's a huge genetic factor but also we talk about environmental uh, implications. So mostly these environmental implications are in the early developmental period because we talk about neurodevelopmental disorder. So there are a lot of genetics happening. This is mostly for medical colleagues to understand. When you have a young child, especially if you have something like dysmorphism, you always need to think about any genetic morphology. But most of the time, it's very polygenic. So with one genetic test, sometimes you might not be able to identify, but there are certain genetic things that you can certainly say, okay, this is, you know, this is why the child is having autism. But you need to know as a clinician, there are certain gene certain condition, you have a predisposition to have autism. If you see a child with Down syndrome, if you see a child with tuberous sclerosis, if you see a child with muscular dystrophy, they have genetic preponderance to have autism spectrum. Okay, and this is the other common thing. So you have a, a brain which subject to some sort of a perinatal insult. So I will explain why this is important. So this is what we see in most of our perinatal, you know, histories, the prematurity, hypoxic ischemia, sepsis, something happening during that early developmental period since conception and that affects the brain. So what will happen? There's a genetic preponderance, there's a susceptible period in the brain, and something happens, exogenous stresses. And this can switch on what we call epigenetic switch. So this is like this dim light, you know. We have dim lights which if you put the switch full on, it's full. 
If you put it half, it's dim. And if you don't switch it on, it's off. So the spectrum, it's like that. So you get a spectrum depending on how much your switch is on. So the how your switch is switched on based on all three factors I mentioned. The brain is in the susceptible period. You have the genetic preponderance and you have exogenous stress. So this is why you need to tell parents. It's not their fault. It's very important for parents to be not feel guilty about themselves when we talk about interventions, but they are said, you need to understand the scientific uh, basis behind it. I will talk very little about pathophysiology for people to understand. So what will happen is what they say, so you know that we talk about children having larger size heads when we talk about autism. This is what we see in children with autism. So this is because they have large white matter in their brain. So the, the pathological studies have shown what will happen. You surely, you're supposed to lose that huge large, uh, you know, huge chunk of white matter and turn it to gray matter. But this doesn't happen in autism. And that's why they have larger head size as well. So anybody's interested, we are happy to share some more articles on this. I just wanted to touch this for you to understand the basis. So. Why do we need to worry about autism? You know, you tell autism, but you know, is it, is it that bad? Well, yes. Now we talk about at least one child in every classroom. So the la latest US study says one in 44 children. So think about how many kids you see in your clinical setting and mindful about the risk factor. So you see not one in 44, because most of the children, the pediatric clinics will see, will carry some sort of a risk factor we talked about. And boys are four times more likely to get the diagnosis. So there are different, again, a uh, lot of logics behind it, but I might not need to go into the details. And it is rising. So what we had several years back is not what we see. So if you think about from 2000, that's 241% rise in autism incident. So how many, how many cases you diagnose? So this is, we think mostly because of the increased awareness and the, the more diagnosis being made, but we don't know. There could be environmental factors or genetic factors that contribute to this. All right. So now we talk about autism. OK, so you have autism. But what is the importance of diagnosis? So in average, usually even in US, children are diagnosed around three to four years of age. However, the early signs of autism are seen since their infancy, early infancy. Now, even in US, when you ask from the parents, most of them had concerns from early infancy, but unfortunately, they received the diagnosis at four years. Now, what is the problem with that? I talked about the developing brain. We talked about how the brain makes synapses. So earlier you make a diagnosis, you have the opportunity to train the brain or teach the brain to make new pathways, altered pathways to what is being lost. So you can develop new pathways on social communication. You can make up for the deficit you have. So that, that opportunity you will only have if you catch it during early brain development. Because after five years, you know your brain pathways are, you know, the, the synaptogenesis is slowing down. So that advantage will be lost. So what do we see when you say early autism? So when you look back, a lot of babies who later receive diagnosis of autism, within first six months, they mostly have, very interestingly, have a lot of motor difficulties. So when you do general movement assessment, you can see abnormalities in them. They will have concerns about their visual attention. Parents will have problems in their social interactions and social communication, as well as some of them will have feeding problems. And then with time, particularly when they, you know, 6 to 12 months, when they catch up on their communication milestones, then you see the deficit compared to a typically developing child. They are delayed in babbling, they fail to make play, uh, functional, you know, play activities, they fail to make purposeful interactions with the caregiver. 
and that and the emotional reactivity is less and then with time so more they become into preschool age parents start to notice the differences more especially in the preschool because when they put to a preschool they notice okay my child is a bit different from the other children so then I mean, we, we are still trying to get that diagnosis a little earlier rather than three to four years. But three to four years, you can see the typical features presenting. So during the lifestyle, what will happen if you have autism? So you have problems or you have deficits in your social communication. You have a lot of repetitive behaviors and that has affected your function. So in the infancy, they will have very atypical social developments. They will not understand how to make relationships. They will not understand how to communicate with other person. And they will have a lot of atypical sensory experiences. Now, what will happen when they grow up, when they go to school? Because of these things, they will fail to get the adequate education. So the educational uh, uh, integration and social integration is affected which will result in, as an adult, they will not have adequate economic achievements and they will not have adequate social participation. So if you do something, change something early, you will change something in that adult. You will be making a very fruitful citizen. You will make somebody integrated into the society. You will get somebody who is going to achieve good academic achievements. So that is what we are trying to do in our children. Okay. So when you think about the features of autism, we talk about screening. So you universally look at children uh, presenting with concerns or generally to catch children who have risk for autism. So there are several screening methods. We are not yet as a country using this, but one commonly used and something that is translated to Sinhala is modified checklist. Uh, for autism in toddlers, or we use it as MCHAT. Uh, so MCHAT is available. However, there are prob you know we have concerns about the sensitivity and specificity. Uh, in our clinical practice, we use something else as well. Uh, this is 16 signs by 16 months in Autism Navigator. So we will be sharing this checklist again with you, uh, which is, uh, again, we find it quite sensitive and, and uh, useful. However, it's not yet translated and validated to Sri Lanka. As I said, we will be doing other than assessment. We will be doing video monitoring, the telehealth, the mood therapy. And then when they are at school age, the school readiness, and then educational support, while doing support for all the other students. So wow. when we diagnose, we put them into three severity levels, depending on the support they need. And this is the basis of our intervention. So we use naturalistic, so we, we, we try to do most intervention in the natural environment. They are developmental and behavioral basis. So we use different um, theoretical principles for our interventions. But what we need to remember by doing everything, what we are trying to do, we are trying to minimize the force deficits, we are trying to improve their functionality, and we try to minimize the problematic behaviors and finally improve their quality of life. That is what really matters. Okay? the community takes up the bigger role so the school or community the emphasis on the education is more and then it's the community that has to work with the child and the family so there are several things we look at when we talk about the outcomes but can, you can see even at two years, the expressive language skills at two years decide your adult outcome. Your uh, adaptive skills at four years, adaptive skills at four years can decide your adult outcome. So this is why even at early years to do look at all these things and support so you can have a better outcomes as an adult. And all our interventions are based on ICF framework. I hope you are familiar with it. To improve the functionality, improve the participation, and then environment by modifying environmental and personal factors. So I will hand over to Dr. Darshani. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I think we'll answer at the end of the session. Thanks. Uh, 
Thank you so much, Dr. Nilini Vipulagama. Actually, she has mentioned everything which I was planning to say. <laughs> so, however, uh, uh, as a child and adolescent psychiatrist, what I see, there have been so many children with autism have been misdiagnosed uh, with uh, time. So, as uh, Dr. Dilini said, this is a spectrum. Uh, children can present with different symptoms and also it is with like different level of severity. So, sometimes children can have mild symptoms, some can have moderate symptoms and some can have severe symptoms. So, when it comes to children with mild symptoms, what will be the uh, biggest challenge? Like, So, I would like to ask from the audience, if a child is having mild symptoms, what would be the challenge? They will present late. They will not be identified by even by the medical profession because I have seen so many instances where they have been missed by the health sector and given different diagnosis and even treated for other conditions. So since a lot of medical professions, pediatricians, medical officers uh, are here, I would like to focus on that area. So I would like to mention how these children with autism can present in different ways at different age groups, right? So initially, as Dr. Dilini mentioned, so at the PH, uh, W level, like public health midwives, now they have been advised to look for the social emotional development component. So uh, when they do the home visits, they look for these symptoms, even what Dr. Dilini mentioned. So some, uh, there is a possibility for the public health midwives to uh, detect Early features like this poor eye contact, uh, not saying tata bai, not pointing, or these kind of features, the so called red flag signs. So, uh, this is mainly for children with severe symptoms. But then, if the children were not detected at that level, and then it will go to the second level where Parents may have noticed some changes in their children and they have seen TV programs. Now, I think there's a lot of awareness programs going in social media, in TV, so that parents have some understanding about autism. So, sometimes parents feel that there are some changes. My child is different, so I better show my child to a doctor. Or else, if a child is taken to a pediatrician or a medical officer for some other reason, like having fever, diarrhea or whatever, and then doctors might detect that this child is not having eye contact, this child is not having joint attention, better to uh, show this child to a child psychiatrist or a pediatric neurologist or whoever for them to diagnose autism. So that is at that level. So, and after that, Again, if the child is not being detected at that level, then what will happen? Then they will move on to the preschool level. And when they, before starting preschool, most of the time they have to face an interview, right? So when they face the interview and they are the preschool teachers or the, the assess, at the assessment, they will detect that they are, this child is having a speech problem. This child is not normal. This child is different from other children. Then they are they, they advise the parents to go and show your child to a doctor. Then that that level. So after that, we, if the child was missed at that level also, then that what will happen? Then the child will enter the preschool or primary school. So how would they present it there from the preschool? I would like to ask from the audience, are they presenting with poor eye contact speech delay? What else? Most of the time, they are presenting with the complaint of hyperactivity. Like I have seen so many children, they have presented with hyperactivity and even that some doctors have started treatment for hyperactivity, ADHD. Is that the real reason for their hyperactivity? So, what is the reason for their hyperactivity? Like as we were mentioning, they are having deficits in social interactions and social communication, as well as difficulties in understanding social concepts. So, even if they go to the preschool, they 
are not aware that they have to sit like other children and they have to follow the similar instructions like other children which were given by the preschool teacher. So, but if sometimes they may have average eye contact, sometimes they may have uh, some amount of speech development, that is why they have not been detected, but they are very, very hyperactive. So most of the time, what the teacher says is she is not, he or she is not sitting in the classroom, they are running around, uh, not listening to us, not obeying the commands, which is somewhat similar to the clinical picture of ADHD. So I have seen so many children who have been misdiagnosed as ADHD and been treated with methylphenidate, risperidone, atomoxetine, many medications. That is why I want to highlight these children with moderate to mild to moderate symptoms of ASD can present as different clinical presentations which have been missed at early stages. So then after that, uh, what will happen? Like the hyperactivity, and they present with hyperactivity, then what will happen? When they move on to the adolescent age, so that is the main component that I have to focus at today's uh, session. So what will happen to the adolescents? So just imagine an adolescent, because if an adolescent is at a normal school, it means that the symptoms might be mild to moderate. So what kind of features they would have? How would they present to your clinical practice or to your clinic? Sorry? Can't hear. They have difficulties in social interactions, peer relationships. So what would be the complaint from the teachers or the parents most of the time? They say that having a lot of like uh, uh, behavioral disturbances in the classroom, like pushing, pulling other children, hitting other children, not listening to the teacher, like uh, taking other children's stuff without get getting permission. Always disturbing the other children. Again, this will show a picture like ADHD, conduct disorder, a different clinical picture. But actually, they are having clinical features of undetected autism spectrum disorder and they are functioning to an average extent. But due to these deficits in social interactions as well as difficulties in understanding social concepts, they find it difficult and they are struggling in the school environment. So at that level, again, they are being bullied, they are being cornered by other children and the, again, the te teachers will ask the parent to show this child to a child psychiatrist, this child is having some problem. It's good if they show a child to a child psychiatrist, then, then we can look in a broad manner. Sometimes we have seen so many children have been treated with multiple medications for these behavioral disturbances rather than focusing on the clinical features of, missed clinical features of ASD, right? And then another problem in adolescence. These adolescents as we are all aware, are a different uh, group of people, right? It's a pathway from child to adulthood. So during this period, even a normal adolescent have so many, I will be discussing it in my next slide. So they can have dif very different kind of a physical, emotional, behavioral, cognitive development and changes. And it is a very challenging period. Even a normal adolescent find it difficult to go through this period. They can have a lot of mental health issues like anxiety, depression, uh, difficulties in uh, like uh, low self-esteem, self-confidence, uh, uh, difficult relationship with peers. So, so many mental health issues. But children with uh, autism, when they go to the adolescent age, due to their this difficult social relationships, difficulties in, and I will be ex explaining it in detail in my next slides, they can have a lot of mental health issues. So they can present with anxiety, depression, self-harming behaviors, and again, people might not detect this underlying ASD features, and they will straight away treat with antidepressant, antipsychotics, or different medications, and then the parent will come and tell us again, we have shown the child to multiple, many doctors, they have started so many medications, but still 
the child is not responding without addressing the core problem with a child having asd we cannot treat or we cannot solve the other problems with medications so that is the main message i want to give you and uh, i think uh, dr dilini asked me to just give a brief overview about screening but at the same time she did it so i don't have to worry about it anyway in sri lanka chdr is the main screening which is used at ground level because uh, family health bureau has already trained can you all hear me uh, most uh, like uh, mid public health midwives mainly in five district for the moment and they are planning to train other uh, public health midwives in other districts also to uh, improve their awareness about autism spectrum disorder and strictly follow the chdr social uh, emotional development component and to if they find any def deficits in the, this area to direct these children to emerge and then to the proper uh, pathway so this uh, i don't think i need to focus on this uh, assessment tools this is a screening which uh, the pictorial autism assessment schedule which is not like which is which uh, has a 80% sensitivity uh, was done by professor hema mali but we are not uh, like using it in the community level and this is a clinical diagnosis i think so, uh, saman mali madam will discuss it in detail in next uh, half an hour to one hour time so i'm not going to focus on that area and it is mainly focus on uh, based on dsm 5 diagnostic criteria and no specific investigation why i highlighted this point here is because as as doctors as pediatricians as medical uh, officers this is the biggest challenge we are facing when it comes to uh, children with autism because if a child is having fever if a child is having diarrhea or something like that just imagine if a child is having fever you do a blood test and it becomes as positive for dengue then when you show it to the parent they do not have any doubt they will just accept it because there is you don't have to uh, have any uh, worry about it because the report is there but here we do not have a specific investigation blood investigation ct scan or nothing eeg so parents are worried about it even if we say that this is a neurodevelopmental disorder this is the etiology these are the etiological factors these are the risk factors but they still, as parents they all, the, the question which comes to them is why this happened to my child and they always ask when they are when they the always the, the, the question they always ask from me is doctor make her when they are when they are make it mokak kari test ekak kalla hoyanna beri de so those are the two questions they always ask so as like stakeholders who are working with uh, children having autism spectrum disorder this area we need to be very clear about like there is no specific investigation it is a clinical diagnosis based on dsm 5 diagnostic criteria so uh, autism diagnosis and uh, observation schedule uh, second edition this can be like this is not used in our country more in it is used in most countries but uh, in our country it's mainly the dsm5 diagnostic criteria and the severe about the severity also dr dilini mentioned i don't think i have to uh, worry about it so i will focus mainly on the symptoms and signs of autism in adolescents because i think madam wants me to mainly focus on that area so uh, so adolescent as i mentioned earlier it is a pathway to uh, adulthood from a childhood different physical emotional cognitive and behavioral changes occur during this period right so the same symptoms which we discussed earlier which dr dilini vipulagama mentioned earlier related to autism there are two core symptoms poor social interactions and communication 
as well as restricted and repetitive interest and behaviors. So thinking about the challenges adolescents facing and uh, different behavioral, cognitive, emotional changes which are happening at this age group, uh, let's try to understand what are the symptoms they can have the poor social interactions and communication as well as restricted and repetitive interest and behaviors. How these symptoms will appear in adolescents. So poor social interaction and communication. Adolescents will start experiencing social differences, right? So they will start feeling that they are different from others. So Tell me, if we feel that we are different from others, what will happen to us? Yeah? Social isolation. We feel anxious. We feel worried. We, our so, uh, self-esteem, self-confidence will go down. Th later, it can even go up to anxiety, depression. Right? Madam, I don't know whether I am taking too much time. Maybe five minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, and they still, they can have limited vocabulary. So, what will happen if they have limited vocabulary? They may have difficulties in expressing their emotions in a proper manner. And at the same time, we always talk about poor social emotional reciprocity. So, they will have difficulties in understanding other people's emotions, feelings. They will have difficulties in understanding other people's emotions, feelings by they are facial expressions, right? How would that affect an adolescent? It will affect the maintenance of peer relationships, right? Imagine if a child is behaving in a rude manner. If a child, if, when it comes to adolescence, they always think about fitting to a social group. They always want to be fitted because at this age group, they are struggling about their own self-image. They don't know who they are. So most of the time, their self-image is their internal body image. Their self-image is based, built on the comments made by other people, especially peers, right? So since these children have very limited capacity to understand what others say, what will happen? They will definitely struggle with social relationships and friendships, social uh, interactions. And due to all these factors, they will have difficulties in keeping friends. They, most of the time, if you have spoken to an adolescent with uh, autism, they would say on, they may have only one or two friends, even less than that. And they will find it difficult to work cooperatively. Right? They don't know the concept of sharing. So identifying social concepts. So they will not share. They will just grab things. They will not know that they will have to wait for the turn. It is not a feature of ADHD. Here they do not know that they have to share things with others. They don't know that they have to wait until they get the turn. Right? And sometimes they can behave in a socially inappropriate and unexpected manner. This is a common presentation of adolescents who come to us. Like the parents may say, when they go to the school, right? they would do something which is inappro socially inappropriate behaviors, which is also common. And also difficulties in empathizing others, which empathy is a very important uh, skill. A any individual needs to maintain social relationships. Right? So if they find it difficult to maintain empathy, again, it will affect social re relationships in a very negative manner. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, they will not be able to spend time with others. They will always try to be socially isolated and uh, struggle in teamwork, sharing. And still, they may have poor eye contact as well, which also can affect peer relationships and long-term relationships. Okay, now we are moving on to the, the second component, which we mentioned in early child development, like restricted and repetitive interest and behaviors. So what we see in adolescents, here they present with inflexibility or rigidity, 
with what we call is black and white thinking. They only know the things either can be black or white. They don't know that there can be a range of colors in between that. So that is their thinking pattern. They most of the time they think in a black and white manner. And uh, they also can find difficult to uh, work in an uh, like uh, engage in imaginative play outside their interest. If they know something, they only work on that. They will not be open up to uh, do experiments. They will not be open up to explore new things. But at the same time, they can have ex uh, like uh, excellent memories regarding things which they like. I think we know that some children, uh, autistic children can have exceptional talents, exceptional memories. So likewise, if they like something, they can do it very well. And they will struggle to generalize skills. Like if they can do some work, they might not know that the same skill can be applied to another work. So because they are thinking in a different manner. And still they can have these sen sensory issues. Like they still they may be sensitive to sounds, sights, textures and all. And the, the other component of sensory processing difficulties still can be seen in adolescence. So experiencing sensory overload, being unable to cope with cues, crowds, sensitive to touch. Even this being unable to cope with cues or crowds can be present as social anxiety, right? The parents or the child may come and say that child cannot stay in crowded places. So whenever an adolescent comes and tell a psychiatrist that the child is having difficulties in staying in a crowded place, we always focus on social anxiety, agoraphobia. But before coming to this kind of diagnosis, like if we, when it comes to child and adolescent psychiatry, we always ask the history from the birth. So to make sure that we are not going to miss any of these de developmental problems and having difficulties with planning, organization, their work. And this is the other component. They can have, I think Dr. Dilini mentioned about the cognitive uh, problems they can have. So they can have limited ability to interpret social cues, difficulties in processing large amount of information, working memory, transition from one task to another. We know that they have difficulties in moving from one task to another. And planning and prioritizing organization, starting and completing a, a task, and controlling impulses, emotional regulation. So these problems, difficulties in controlling difficulties in uh, regulating their emotions can present as a isolated mental health issues. They may present with excessive crying, uh, irritability, difficult self-harming behavior, so then they may be diagnosed as some other condition. So these things can occur. What I want to highlight is that children with autism who have not been diagnosed at early ages, maybe they're having mild symptoms or they may have had symptoms but have improved further and can present in adolescence with different presentations. And if we do not focus on their early child development and their uh, De uh, social development, emotional relationships, we might miss this diagnosis. So if we miss the diagnosis, the giving thousands of medications will not solve the problem, right? And again, this is another problem, like uh, children with ASD can have poor hygiene and uh, they may not focus on maintaining their external appearance. So it can lead to further bullying, further social isolation, and being discriminated by other people. So this is another huge issue. Okay, so those are the main problems that an adolescent or a youth can experience during their adolescent if they have features of ASD. And I will focus on prognosis because whenever a child is brought to a doctor, what will be the parents' question? Next question. Yeah, they will accept that this is the autism. Then what will be their next next question? They will ask, are there any interventions? Make it a mukada karan. And then what will they ask? We when we explain about the interventions, what would they ask next? Next. Behetak tiyanavada. They always ask, is there any tablet to improve these symptoms? I would like to take this opportunity to mention that there is no any medication under the world that which will improve the core symptoms of OTC. 
So, if the child is having other comorbidities, like uh, medical comorbidities, for example, epilepsy, any kind of medical problems, or else any kind of psychiatric comorbidities, hyperactivity, uh, anxiety, depression, even psychosis, then we can treat these conditions with medications, but not the core symptoms of ASD. Right? So, what are the prognostic factors? Again, now they will ask. I think that is the next question they are going to ask. So, this is a neurodevelopmental disorder. We can't use the word cure. The word cure is not with us when it comes to autism spectrum disorder. So, there are multiple factors which determine the outcome of a child with autism. What would you think? I have already... Oh, it's not very clear. I have... Uh, Put the main factors, yeah. As Dr. Dilini mentioned, early identification as well as early effective interventions. Because so many we have seen so many children who have been diagnosed early. Early diagnosis, but not have gone to the therapies properly. So they are coming again at age three and saying the child was not improved. So early identification as well as early effective intervention is a must. And next thing is the symptom severity. Dr. Dilini Vipulagama mentioned that the symptoms will be categorized into mild, moderate, severe, level 1, level 2, level 3. So if the symptoms are mild, then outcome would be better. If the symptoms are severe, we can anticipate a outcome would be poor. If the children, child is having good intelligent level, then the prognosis would be better. And if there are any associated comorbidities, this is a neurodevelopmental disorder. So they can have other neurodevelopmental disorders like LD, ADHD as comorbidities, as well as other medical comorbidities, epilepsy and medical conditions like GI problems, constipation. In addition to that, they can have more psychiatric comorbidities. We always say that children with autism are at higher risk of developing mental health issues like anxiety, depression, bipolar affective disorder, OCD, as well as even schizophrenia. So if they have other comorbidities, then the prognosis would be poor. Finally, good systemic support again would affect the better outcome. So this is what I wanted to discuss related to uh, symptoms and signs as well as how they present to the system. Uh, thank you so much everyone for listening to me. Darwa Obasamaka Sina Novima Obadis Nobelim Autism Tatwe Lakshinak Vihaki Autism Ladru Vedi Mahadunagatwood Hondin Palanik Lahaki Nopama Vamatan Ekaikai Hatai Harsian Waibi Dutuna SLACD Saha CDB Samu Hikamevra If your child does not smile or make eye contact with you, it could be a sign of autism. Autism can be successfully managed if identified at an early age. Call our helpline on 0117-490000, a joint effort by the SLACD and CDB. மற்றும் <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>